when you say the words Donald Trump, either one of two things goes through your mind. You're either filled with the most heinous rage and absolute disgust, or you see an absolute brilliant businessman. Now love him or hate him, he had one of the most successful underdog political campaigns of 2016. And out of nowhere, no one expected him to come out on top and win the 2016 presidential election over some of the most powerful families like the Clintons that we have ever seen. So when it comes to the 2020 Democratic debate, these 20 different candidates will have more than enough to chew when it comes to facing against Donald Trump 1v1 in the year 2020. However, after watching the debates in Detroit, there's one candidate that seems to stand ahead of the rest, and in my opinion, he's actually now the favorite to win. Now I'm talking about Andrew Yang. Now although he may be down in the polls for now, I have four reasons and why Andrew Yang will win the presidential candidacy for 2020. Now make sure you stay to the end to see the four reasons because I think you'll agree with them more than you think. And of course if you don't, let me know in the comments below, let me know who you're going for right now and let's see if you'll agree with me by the end. By the way, my name is Fly Stewart and you're listening to the Uneducated Investor Podcast. This is a podcast where we mix pop culture with business. And we try to mix the two in a little, little flirty tango. Now, if you like this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We post three videos a week. And I hope we get better at investing together. So Andrew Yang is an up and comer presidential candidate that seems to just be absolutely on fire lately. Now Andrew Yang has proposed a policy where he's planning to give $1,000 every month to every American citizen. Now this concept of universal basic income isn't new and he's calling it the freedom dividend because quite frankly, it kind of sounds cooler to most people and most people are on board for that. Now, the reason why I think he's going to be the favorite to win the presidential candidacy in 2020 is because of four reasons. And the first one is how he actually plans to fund this $1,000 for every American. Because let's face it, that's really expensive. That's a lot of money. I mean, how many Americans realistically are over the age of 18 in America? That's a lot. And this has been one of his major criticisms of UBI and his major criticisms of his plan. So what he is proposing is to have something called a VAT tax, a value added tax. Essentially, every time value is created in a good, you get tax on it. So let's give an example of what this means. Picture three different companies. The first one is a mining company, the second one is a steel company, and the third one is a car company. Now the mine company, mining company mines materials that cost them $100 to mine these materials. And they sell it to the car company for $200. Now when they sell it, they make a $100 profit, so that is the value added that will be taxed. So that $100 is going to be taxed. Now the steel company is going to sell the new steel that they have that costs $200 to a car company for $1,000. Now they profit $800 because they created $800 of value and that $800 will be taxed by the VAT tax. Now of course the consumer at the end will buy it from the car company for a thousand dollars, a thousand to keep it simple, and this will be a profit of eight hundred dollars, and that eight hundred dollars will be taxed by the VAT tax. Now of course people who are very suspicious of the VAT tax say this is an easy way for that producers, those three companies to pass that VAT tax onto the customer because instead of charging $1,000 to the customer for the car, they will just charge $1,200 to incorporate the VAT tax within their price so that essentially the customer will end up paying more in the end. This is similar to fast food and sit down dinners. Sit down restaurant dinners are more expensive because the value of having someone serve you is embedded within the food. 
Whereas fast food, they can do it cheaper because they don't have to pay waiters and waitresses. Now, the, what makes Andrew Yang's VAT tax so great and the reason why they're implementing it all over the world, a bunch of different countries already have it, is that you can do this differently on different goods. The more luxury an item is, the higher the VAT tax that Andrew Yang will charge. So we know that yachts and luxury hotels are realistically only being bought by the 1%, maybe the 5% if they want to spurge, but mostly the 1% is only buying these yachts and really upscale condos. So if you have a VAT tax of 15% on that, it's really easy to have those luxury items affect the highest tax bracket of people. Whereas something like apples and oranges and diapers, things that everyone buys, everyone consumes, those things can have little to no VAT tax, which means that the lowest population of income won't be affected by this tax as much as the highest population of income. Which is really great because if there's one thing that the rich people are great at doing, it's not paying any taxes. The way our tax system is set up, it's set up purposely so that the rich people won't pay taxes. Now, if you look at my screen real quick, now if you look at my screen real quick, I wanna show you something. And this is one of those things where, this is one of those things that people have a misconception of how everything happens. So if you look at my screen real quick, you will see this is a very notable, you probably already seen this, this is essentially income tax brackets. So a lot of the average people see this and they're like, oh, when you're making over half a million dollars, you pay around 37% tax for your federal tax and for your state tax. If you're making over 200,000, you're paying 6%. If you're making over a million, you're paying 8%. So a lot of people see this and they're like, wow, you know, the richest people are paying around 50% in taxes. However, the thing that us as average people, we overlook is that the rich people, that's the top 1% and 0.1%, make their money not as salary income, but make most of it as a business income and, of course, as capital gains from their stocks. So that is taxed at different rates. Someone who owns a business can have a lot of tax deductions, which is why Warren Buffett famously says that he pays less in taxes than his secretary. Now, the second reason why Andrew Yang looks like to be the favorite after these debates is that he has a message that talks to middle America. Now, what a lot of people get wrong about Donald Trump is the reason that he won wasn't because he was saying the most racist things that came to his mind. It wasn't him talking about necessarily keeping Mexicans out, but it was about him answering problems that middle America faces that a lot of candidates just aren't talking about. Immigration doesn't affect New York. It affects the lower states where Mexicans are getting in. So talking about issues that affect them, of course, help them and make them want to vote. If you're in middle America and you're in a place where jobs are leaving, if you're in Detroit and you're seeing car manufacturers shutting down, you're seeing coal jobs disappearing in the middle of states, which is causing this massive unemployment there and massive opioid epidemics because when you get laid off, you get discouraged, then drugs are just so easy for you. Donald Trump talks to that audience and he doubles down and saying, make America great again. We're going to get your jobs back and stop giving all these jobs to China which is what these people need and want to hear. The reason why healthcare is always such a big discussion every year is because when you are sick and you can't afford your health insurance, the only place you really have to turn is your president and the policies that they put in. So these are people who are very likely to vote for you because they literally need change and they need these policies to be effective. The same thing can be said of these jobs in middle America. If you see your whole town being affected by these jobs and leaving your town, of course you're gonna vote for the guy who actually is proposing a solution to helping you get your income back or your money back. So Andrew Yang, of course, $12,000 isn't enough to live off of, but it is enough where while you're looking for a job, you won't be worried that you can't find anything else. Which leads me to 
0.3 on why Andrew Yang looks to be the favorite. And that's just simply that this is has a great economic impact. Now in the past, we were taught something called trickle down economics. And this was a thought where if you give businesses more money, you have them pay less in taxes, they will hire more workers, which is great for the economy. But as we know, businesses aren't in the business of hiring people, they're in the business of making money. So what happens is you get companies like Amazon and Facebook who have little to no employees and the people who work there are rich, but they have no incentives to hire more people because it doesn't necessarily make them more money. That's why when you go to an Amazon warehouse, it's filled of machines doing these fulfillments for their orders because they don't necessarily need people to work these jobs. However, in Andrew Yang's proposal, he proposes something called trickle up economics, where instead of hoping money gets to people in the economy, he just flat out gives them basically more of a livable wage for them to pay their bills. Now, the reason why this is big is because everyone will get $1,000, yes, but the more in need of money you are, the more it will help you. A person who is rich, who makes over $500,000 a year, if he gets an extra $1,000, he won't necessarily spend that extra $1,000. He'll so just put it in his savings account. Whereas someone who is living paycheck to paycheck, who has bills accruing and being bigger and bigger, will be more likely to spend that $1,000 week to week, which will bring it back to the economy, have that money flow go around and actually make the economy much, much better. Think about it. If you own a pizza shop and everyone's getting an extra thousand dollars, you're going to sell more pizza, which is why Andrew Yang's proposal is essentially a great one economically. And the fourth reason why Andrew Yang looks to be on top of the world is because he's baggage free. Elizabeth Warren said she was half native, essentially. Turns out she's less than 1%, which a lot of people are really mad about. Joe Biden, of course, helped get the crime bill enacted, and this crime bill put a lot of black people away in jail, which a lot of people are mad about. Kamala Harris is a prosecutor, and she also put a lot of black people in jail when she was a prosecutor in New York, which is a lot of people are mad about. And Bernie Sanders, just looks really old. And if we know one thing about Donald Trump, we know he comes with the jokes. So if Bernie and him go on the one, you can bet those old jokes are going to be crazy. Andrew Yang, on the other hand, he has a successful business under his belt with Venture for America, which is essentially a business that helped create jobs in different cities. And coming from two parents who were very academically gifted themselves, his dad passed a bunch of patents. He comes from a family and a background where nothing essentially crazy has come out about him yet. So even though he's an underdog and doesn't have any political experience, well, now that there's no political experience that can be used against him. He didn't vote for any bills that locked a lot of people up that were controversial. He didn't send anyone to war in Iraq. Or he didn't have this Benghazi controversy behind him. Essentially, he has a clean slate, which is kind of a positive for him. Now, there is one big thing in why Andrew Yang is actually vulnerable to lose, and this thing could cost him. You see, 1v1, him versus Donald Trump, he matches up very well. They talk to the same audience, but Andrew Yang comes off more reasonable, which means 1 versus 1, I have no doubt in my mind he'll beat Donald Trump. It's a cake wash. A car wash? A cake eat? A bake-off? I don't know what that expression I'm trying to go for, but it's not gonna be that hard for him to beat him one for one. The problem is the primaries, and this is because of one big thing called name recognition. You see, a lot of average people, a lot of average Americans, don't have time to go and research about all the candidates. They're gonna just go and vote, and they're gonna vote on someone that they've heard of or someone that they know and sounds like great, candidate. So when they go to the polls and they see Elizabeth Warren's name there, they're just going to vote for her because they don't have time to really research themselves. Of course, Andrew Yang is going on absolute fire on YouTube. 
However, there's a lot of people who are 40 years and older who don't go on YouTube that much and get a lot of their information off CNN or Facebook. So that's why these primaries are so important because these debates are a lot of people's first time ever actually seeing Andrew Yang. So he has to build a name for himself while a lot of people like Pamela Harris, like Joe Biden, they already have names that they've built, which allows them to do much, much better much early on. But at the end of the day, that's just my opinion of the four things that I think will really help Andrew Yang win. Have I swayed your opinion? Because for me, it's almost a sure bet, I'd say 80% chance that he has to win in the whole thing. But let me know who you guys like in the primaries. Do you believe that Andrew Yang will win? Or who do you think will win? Let me know. Are you going for Kamala Harris? Are you going for Buddha Judge? Buddha Judge? Why is his name so hard to say? Are you going for Warren Buffett, Bernie Sanders? Let me know in the comments below. Who do you think will win? Make sure to like this video because it takes so long to make. And literally, I recorded this video and I swear to you, my computer turned off. I almost cried on the inside. But I recorded it again because this is just something so fascinating and I want to create a discussion. So let me know who you guys like in the 2020 primary debates. Who do you think will win the whole thing? Will Donald Trump come back and win it again? Let me know in the comments below. As always, the best, most brightest investors are the uneducated ones. Why is that? Because the uneducated investor, they never stop learning. We put out videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three times a week. Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we, Flight Crew, have to take off.